The sun is barely over the horizon, yet Dusk and Elliot have made it to their destination. The Nigger Moor is within sight, but so too are the dead. And whilst travelling underground, they heard a lot of activity. Doors opening and closing above them. It could be ferals, or it could be people. Either way, the dead are here. And no doubt in great number. This is a section of the mega city that they have yet to travel in. What horrors await the twins? Together, we shall see. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. No hope. Where we are going to have to be a little careful here, I think. We have a pupating zombie crawler and a skeletal brute within sight. Now, the sun has just risen, so sight outside right now isn't going to be great for the dead. And we aren't also going to be dealing with the pain that we'd usually have from the sun when it's much higher in the sky. In saying that, though, it's not going to be long before it is much, much higher up. And so let's just peek out and see what's going on. So to the south, we can see the dead wandering around and we can hear a piercing wail to the south. So that's most certainly going to bring a lot of activity that way. We're already dealing with some wounds, so we don't want to be getting into a massive fight here if we can avoid it. If we can get into the mall, into one of the service corridors, that would be the ideal scenario. But we're going to have to be very careful with how we do that. So let's step out onto the street here and just see what this group here is doing. We can see a headless horror further to the southeast that is starting to make its way down to the south, which is where I think we have a entry point to the mall that is. So this pupating zombie, we're going to try and deal with that before it pops. So we're going to use our fire hand to go and pull that in towards us. We've just spotted a zombie predator around here somewhere as well. So let's try and see if we can track down exactly where that is. Well, I can't see it anymore. So it is moving about somewhere. Let's take that for now. And let's see if we can't get a little bit closer to the mall itself. Okay, we are actually seeing that predator again now. And we're seeing something else over here by the water. A zombie blank. Fantastic. So that thing has to die. It certainly has to die. Because our powers are going to disappear in a moment or two. It hasn't got to us just yet. But I think as soon as we're in range, it is probably going to blast us. I, <laughs> I gotta think it will. Or maybe not. You know what? We've managed to grab it so far. Well, we tried to we failed let's try and pull it again for some reason it's not letting us cast it which is interesting yeah for whatever reason we cannot cast okay <laughs> so even though we had some ability still it doesn't look like we could actually use it on the blank even so the thing is dead and that dull sense of loss will eventually disappear we're seeing a zombie not well not just a zombie but a zombie dinosaur i think Oh no, it's a living dinosaur and it is currently fleeing right now. Okay, and the predator over towards the west has seen us now. So while their sight isn't great right now, it's certainly good enough. Let's see if this works. There we go. So we managed to pull that on over towards us. We do want to be quite cautious with the predators though, because they can be really dangerous. We're going to try and see if we can knock it on the ground. So that is now downed. It's not staggered or stunned just yet though. But even so, when it's downed, it's going to have a much harder time striking at us. So that's the best way for us to take care of something like that. We can hear Dusk's heartbeat at the moment and it is pounding. Looking at the dead at the moment, they seem to be heading <laughs> kind of down to where we want to go, which is this area here. Those are doors that lead into the mall. Um, and just looking at them <laughs> roam, I think we might stand a better chance if we try and make our way over here towards the west, because we're seeing other dead <laughs> over here start to make their way down towards this larger group that was chilling out down there and oh boy okay i take it back there are even more over here towards the west just an ungodly horde of ferals and dead and we're also seeing i think some kind of haze it's difficult to tell if it's smoke or if it's some kind of poisonous gas so we might 
want to reconsider trying to do this during the day. Um, there are many houses that are nearby. We could try and take refuge in one of those houses. Heck, we could even take refuge in the subway. It's not going to be as comfortable as a house though. So maybe we try and go for one of them instead. So we're going to start to make our way up towards the north here. We can see yet another pupating zombie. So we'll go and grab that before it manages to turn into something horrid. There we go. That's popped. And we'll start to make our way up towards this home. Obviously, we want to be cautious because there are going to be other um, zombies around here. But right now, this home actually seems to be pretty clear. Most of the dead that we're seeing, where are they? Okay, <laughs> on the other side of the subway station. So we were hearing a lot of activity over that way. And it seems like um, it's probably going to stay there for the time being. We'll check out this kitchen, see if there's anything around. We're not seeing anything. This is a zombie null, according to Elliot. Okay, and we do actually have a way down into a basement here. I wouldn't mind getting into here to try and see if there's anything worthwhile. We are seeking more bandages at the moment. We might want to actually try and see if we can make some. Um, and boil some. We're going to check upstairs just before we do make it downstairs. And what do we hear? A treetop. The upper branches of a tree, there's just enough room to perch here. Okay, that is a fantastic change. It seems like we might actually be able to climb trees now, which could be a game changer. If you could get a spear early on and just kind of perch yourself up in a tree and stab at the dead down beneath you, that could make a massive difference. So if you're trying to get away and it looks like you're surrounded, climb a tree and try and wait it out. Um, hope that something um, takes the dead's attention. And that baseball helmet would be really good if we could wear it. But unfortunately, a pointed horn stop us from wearing that. Elliot could wear something like that, but he'd also suffer from his bark. He'd feel rather uncomfortable. In saying that though, we could still maybe try and convince him to wear it. Let's just see if he would be willing to do that. Something we want you to do, I want you to use this item, and let's just search for helmet. There we go, let's see if that's possible. Cannot wear more than one rigid item, because yeah, the bark is actually considered a rigid item. Which that makes sense, that's fine. So let's not worry about that. Yeah, that's another treetop here as well. So we'll probably have some sprites for those eventually. But I I really do like that that is something that we can do. We could also try and sleep upstairs here. It's not a terrible idea. Um, the light would be a little bit annoying. We could try and move the bed just over into the corner here. I wouldn't be against us doing that. It's a little dangerous. But hey, we can actually... We can mitigate that a little bit here. So if we try and move this... We've actually spotted a zombie dog. Okay, we're hearing quite a bit of activity down beneath us, and it looks like we're going to have to try and boost up our strength here. There we go. 50 strength is more than enough to do that, Dusk. Okay, so I'm kind of trying to block out the light a little bit here. So we can go and close that. Um, that's somewhat better. <laughs> it's, it's still not amazing. Um, let's see. I mean, I guess if we're in the corner here as well, that could help. Can we grab part of this bed and drag it? You cannot grab the bed. Yeah, so we'd have to kind of take it apart. Oh, what am I doing? There's a perfectly good room just over towards the side here. So let's go for that instead. Um, well, I say it's perfectly good, but there's only so many curtains. Uh, we are okay here. The light will probably creep in a bit further. Yeah, we can't push this bed around. This is okay. Um, there's no door here. But what we do have is a bookshelf. So we can actually move that down there. We can block it. Um, if we were to grab the other bookshelves here, we could block out the light entirely. And I'm tempted to do that just because it will actually make our sleep a little bit better. And it's going to be difficult for us to get to sleep. I have no uh, illusions there. It's going to take a while. And Elliot, I'm going to need you to get out the way, buddy. So let's just see if we can swap positions with you. We'll drag that over here. Put it in place and look at that it did actually help a little bit we've got some more squares of darkness we're going to grab this last bookshelf here i'm going to start to drag that around elliot we're going to get it into that position there let's get elliot into this room and there we go <laughs> we are now secure secure in the mega city that is not something very easy to do so we've got lots of candy here we're just going to start snacking on that because we really want to try and make sure that we're putting on more calories um or keeping more calories in general so 
We're gonna eat all of this candy here. It's not super great for us, but what are you gonna do? We're hydrated right now. Our calorie intake is looking pretty good for the most part. We could also have the canned pineapple. Um, we are going to use our gluttonous consumption here. Or actually, no, we're not because our focus is terrible. So we'll just have to go with that for the moment. Um, we are gonna go and put in our earplugs. That'll make it a little bit easier for us to get to sleep. And is there anything that we can take here to help with that? Well, I suppose we should also have a look at just making sure that everything is disinfected before we go to sleep. We're going to do the same thing for Elliot as well. Just going through one by one, disinfecting everything with these alcohol wipes. Because we've got so many of them, we can afford to do that. As for bandages though, we're only going to bandage the things that are really damaged. So our left arm and our head, I think, will bandage. Yeah, we need to make some more stuff. And you know what? We might actually just spend a little bit of time doing that because we're not tired right now. So I think we'll be able to do that without too much trouble. So we'll use our alcohol wipes on Elliot as well because, yeah, um, most of his stuff looks like it's already been done or it's still okay. Actually, no, no, it's, it's none of that has been <laughs> disinfected. So, okay, I'll get that done. Okay, all of that is disinfected now, which is great. Let's actually just take off our earplugs for now and we'll also go and just drop these hard arm guards because they're completely wrecked at this stage. Elliot's assault pack is completely wrecked as well but it still seems to be kind of holding itself together. His bayonet is pretty beaten up too but if he wanted to use something else, if he had something else in his inventory that he could use, he would use it. Okay, uh, yeah we're hearing smashing from beneath us right now. It's going to make it a little difficult to sleep. Um, let's just sit in this chair for the moment. So if we were to try and make some makeshift bandages, we'd probably just want to try and get cotton sheets. Yeah, we need as many cotton sheets as we can. We will boil them eventually, but honestly, just having something is better than nothing. So we're just going to go and push this back for now. And we're going to grab this curtain, this one here. So we'll tear that down. We will take those two sheets and we'll take the long string as well for the moment. We'll get back into this room, swap positions with Elliot, and get this door back in place. Come on, come on. We can do this. <laughs> Here we go. Only 10 strength when we don't actually have our stuff going on, but it's just enough. So looking at those sheets, we can get 11 cotton sheets from tearing them apart. Uh, we're going to tear apart the other one as well. And we can make some makeshift bandages. Easy enough. We can see that this one takes us 12 seconds and it makes three makeshift bandages so that's the one that we're going to go for and as you can see we can make many and it's not going to take us that long to actually do that excellent 66 makeshift bandages now that will change quite quickly when we try to boil them uh but i don't think that we're going to be able to get away with boiling them easy unless unless in the basement there is a furnace because then we can use that and a little bit of water and a pot to be able to get that done. Although I don't remember seeing any utensils in the kitchen, so that might be a little bit more difficult. We've also been hearing some bashing and smashing down below as well, so we want to be a little bit cautious. Let's just see if there is anything in here. No, not yet, but we could always just duck into another home if we were wanting to do something like that. Okay, looking at the basement here. Oh, <laughs> right. We've got a screecher down here and many oversized cockroaches. Okay, so let's get a little bit closer towards these oversized cockroaches and look at trying to stand our ground against them. We'll let Elliot assist us and excellent road to Shaolin. I feel an army in my fist. We've got our unarmed combat skill up to seven, which that's really, really nice. We like to see that dusk. We're sending these things flying back with our palm strikes. Elliot impaling the oversized cockroach in the abdomen there. Very nice. And I think this one's nearly taken care of. We keep on knocking it back underneath the table, which is why we can't see it. But it looks like we have cleared that all now. Checking this body, the screecher didn't actually have anything on them. Which means that they might have just left that stuff behind, potentially. Yeah. But uh, we do actually have a furnace down here, by the looks of things. Yeah, a gas-powered force air central heating unit. Internal fan. Yeah, well, I mean, we can start a fire in it still. But, uh, yeah, we don't have a pot right now. We've got a lot of clean water here. So let's go and dispense some of that, pour that into our hydration pack. Elliot is still doing okay when it comes to water. You know what? We're actually just going to tell him to stay here for now, guard this position. And we're going to go and see if we can't find another, well, 
a cooking tool somewhere. Unfortunately, the sun is a little bit higher, but I don't think it's high enough that it's going to be a problem for us yet. Ooh, what do we have down there? A dinosaur of some kind. And I wouldn't mind getting into this shed. Um, you know what? We do have our knock wand. Let's try that out here. Okay, we need to wield it first. So let's go and wield the lesser wand of knock. And we'll go and activate that on this door here. You cast knock. Okay. It didn't seem to work. <laughs> it did not seem to work. Okay, so it might not be working like the knock spell, as I might have assumed it to work. Item casts knock at level 10. It never fails. Um, okay, so maybe it doesn't actually work the way that I thought it did. Which, that's unfortunate. Okay, so it looks like we've just got subway stations uh, on this side here. We do have another house, and there's a music store. Okay, so the house is what we're looking for. So we're going to try and make our way on over towards that. We'll just peek around the corner. It looks like it's been pretty beaten up. <laughs> the front door is completely missing. So we're wanting to make our way over towards the kitchen. Let's take down that decayed zombie there. Nothing that we want. Actually, that could be a lie. Let's check the wallet. We'll take that cash card. Oh boy, that's a necro boomer and a regular boomer here. Two for one. Okay, let's go slam that one against the wall. And I don't know if we can get this one from this angle. I mean, we certainly hurt it there. Um, unfortunately, it is going to bring the boomer back, I think. We'll try and see if we can hit it with a mind hammer here. We can. Okay, there wasn't a body left there, so I don't think it was actually able to bring it back. Looks like we've got some painkillers on it there. Um, maybe some tools in that backpack over there. And we do actually have another basement, so we could look at checking that out. I am... Okay, the kitchen was down here. I kind of just uh, completely missed that, huh? Okay, so we're looking for any kind of pot here. We've got detergent, spatulas. There's a can opener. Um, yeah, it doesn't look good. We just need a container in which we can boil water. Uh, okay, great. Thorny Shambler. I don't think that we can slam you with a four shove, but we can use a mind hammer on you. 67 damage is really good. It's downed. It's staggered. We do have some antibiotics in this bathroom here, but I think we're just going to go for another mind hammer. Get that thing killed. And then we'll start to make our way downstairs. We're probably going to wait until we get our stamina back before we actually go down there, though. Because who knows what could be awaiting us right now. We've got a turtleneck in the corner here. A cartoon dust mask. Okay. Plastic goblin mask. Fun. Um, but not what we need. The frisbee is super tempting as well. What have we got here book-wise? Uh, nothing, really. What's that hiding behind there? A document shredder. Okay. Got some MISC software on a USB and just a lot of space and not much else. How difficult is it to find a single pot? Quite, it might seem. So we'll mark this house as explored. The music store probably ain't going to have anything. The fitness gym, kind of the same deal there. We've got a garage, an electronics store, another house across the way here. Damn, that's <laughs> so frustrating. And look, we don't have to boil these things right now, but I just, I think it could be worthwhile if we can actually do that. The music store, I'm kind of half tempted to see what we have going on in there because I don't go into them all that often, but who knows. The gun store really ain't going to have much either. There might be some first aid kits in there that we could potentially use, but we'd stand a better chance by just trying to make it across to another one of these homes. So let's see how bad things are here. We've got a grappler, so we're going to far hand that one over towards us just so that we can take the advantage and uh, take them out. And oh boy, we're seeing a lot of death over in this public park here. So something has killed these things. Oversized wasp guards. So there's a hive around here somewhere. That's good to know. Um, sometimes they can be over our heads, so we need to be wary of that, and that sucks. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and mind hammer these things here. Uh, unfortunately, mind hammer does use a fair amount of stamina, but it is a really, really good tool to use against things that are super fast, like those flesh raptors. Okay, so we're seeing quite a few dead up here, so I'm thinking that it's probably going to be more beneficial to us to just start to head back to where we were. Um, ideally, we could get some boiled bandages, but uh, we can also live without that for now. Yeah, totally fine. So, let's go down here. Let's go tell Elliot to follow us. We're going to be heading back upstairs for the time being. And I think we're probably just going to try and see if we can rest the rest of the day out 
inside here. There we go. That's done. We're in mild pain, so we'll just take some, uh, not antiseptic, some aspirin for that. There we go. We're still feeling pretty full at the moment. <sighs> okay, so let's have a look at some of those makeshift bandages that we've got. It's going to be an average bandaging quality, which is not bad. That's actually pretty good considering how many of them that we've got. It's better than having nothing on your wound at all. I mean, honestly, the poor kind of quality that I was expecting would be fine. But because we are really good at first aid, Dusk knows how to use these bandages the best that she can. I'm just going to go through all of Elliot's various wounds here, and we're going to make sure that they have bandages on so that while he's resting today, he'll stand the best chance of actually getting healed. Okay, that's everything bandaged up there, brother. Now, I really do hope that things are going to be a little bit more quieter downstairs. And if we are to try and get an actual sleep here, we're going to need to probably try and take something. So a sedative may actually end up helping us here because Dusk just in general has trouble getting to sleep. And right now we're not considered tired. We could try and spend some time just practicing some of our mental abilities. That is dangerous though, because we are also going to be, you know, using more calories just in general. We'll actually go prone here and see if that helps us just be more difficult to see. And then let's have a look at some of our practice that we can try and pull off. Honestly, Noisemaker isn't a bad one for us to try and work at because uh, we haven't got it yet. So I think we'll try and give that a shot. Oh, and now we begin meditating. And this is the process that we kind of just need to let happen. Elliot's chomping on eggs right now. Dusk is taking a deep breath as strange feelings fade. So she had something kind of going on. Uh, it could have been that she was observed or that her powers were being enhanced by something else out there. And he's eating yet another egg. Good for you, brother. And there we go. As you meditate, all the pieces suddenly come together. You've unlocked the noisemaker power. Wonderful. Uh, let us stop meditating. And we've got Journeyman Wizard. You've learned enough spells that in a more reasonable time, you would have graduated from your apprenticeship. Wonderful. We're no longer a apprentice wizard. We are now a journeyman. And all throughout the day here, it's now 10 a.m. We've had wasps outside attacking the dead that are out there. Um, so, yeah, that's been happening. Uh, we have also managed to get a, a few of our wounds kind of um, looking a little bit better. So we haven't been wasting the day. We are going to go and eat some more of this canned pineapple though because that's nice and we're going to eat some more of the smoked meat because again we are trying to just make sure that we are packing on more calories. We're a normal weight now but that won't last forever. We're going to eat some more fried seeds as well. We should be able to fit them in. Okay so now we have Noisemaker as an ability. Let's have a look at you. It's all the way down the bottom here. Using a focused burst of telekinesis, slam two objects together or an object into the ground or simply hit the ground with your powers, causing a loud noise. So that will help um, draw more things towards it. Right now the range is two, which is absolutely useless. It's the same as us just shooting or shouting. Um, so I think what we need to try and do there is just practice this. Practice as much as we possibly can. And if we're batch crafting practice, I think Elliot can assist us with that as well. So that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, we're going to contemplate Noisemaker more and that should that should help us. So let's try and just do them in batches of two, I think. Um, or we could just go for just a little bit over an hour. So we are now working on it and it seems like Elliot might be able to help. Yes, he is assisting with the crafting and oh boy, Dusk suddenly fell asleep. That's okay. We did want that to happen at some point, and she didn't really fall asleep for all that long. Um, Elliot, did you actually fall asleep then? No, he's still awake, he is still aware. That's good. Let's go prone here, just so we're a little bit more difficult to see. And we're gonna try and continue on that meditation. Oh boy, <laughs> let's stop crafting as the window shatters and a shadow raptor appears. Okay, well, it's a chance for us to use some of our powers. We're going to use a mind hammer on that thing. And unfortunately, that does shatter the window further. Um, yeah, good job, Dusk. Good job. But I'm fortunate that it was able to... Well, it wouldn't have seen us because the curtains were closed, but it must have sensed that we were here and uh, came charging at us. So there's a lot more light in here. It's going to be more difficult to sleep when we choose to sleep. Also, our legs are super warm right now. So let's go try and take some stuff off there. 
The leg guards are quite warm, the scrap boots are the same, and the army pants will take those off for now as well. So we should be at least a little bit more comfortable here. What we need to be wary of is wasps now just flying in through the open window. Okay, and we've finished that block of meditation. Did we get a level here? Not quite, but we're pretty close to getting there, so we're just going to go and repeat that. And Dusk fell asleep again, <laughs> briefly. Uh, so we're going to take that opportunity to eat some more smoked meat, listen to all the activity downstairs, which there's a lot of that, drink some nice clean water, and we'll probably knock back an aspirin at the same time. We're seeing some of the dead out there on the road. They can't see us at the moment, especially when we're staying nice and prone. Yeah not a chance to see us. They may be seeing Elliot. Uh, we could try and tell him to go prone for now. We can get him to sometimes change his movement. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not that concerned. Let's get back to it. And that is yet another block of meditation done. We feel a little odd, like you've just awoken from a dream. All that psionic channeling might have unexpected effects. So yeah, we've got some things going on there. We're also, um, yeah, nether attuned and we're uh, observed. Our arms and our torso is quite warm as well. So we're probably going to go and take off some of the extra bits and pieces that we have on. The Kevlar vest, that can come off for now. So we've really just got the apron. It is a warm summer day. Dusk's wounds are looking really good, and we've managed to get this up to level 2 now, so we have a range of 4. I think we're just going to keep on working with this for the rest of the day, until we get tired or until the sun sets on us. Okay, we have a spell level of 3 with Noisemaker now. The range is currently 4, which I don't think that's bumped up from level 2 just yet, so I'm going to try and see if we can go further with this. However, we are tired, we could try and sleep now. It's not going to be easy to do with all the noise that's going on and also with how bright the light is outside, but we could give it a shot. Here, it isn't all that bad. If we were to wear our earplugs, that would certainly help. There is a chance that something could just fly in through the window here, though, so it's, it's also a little bit of a concern of mine. I just want to have a look at our head. Okay, the bandage is still good, and the disinfection quality was not that great, so we'll do some work on that. Okay. I reckon we'll try and get some sleep dusk. And there we go, we fall asleep not long after starting to attempt to. The question is, how long can we actually sleep for here? Oh, and what a way to wake up. Dusk, first of all, <laughs> wakens to a nice cool air. Uh, but with her earplugs on and her heavy sleeping, she has neglected to realize that the floor beneath her to her left has collapsed and from that darkness arms have grabbed at her a grappler has taken hold of dusk and it is down here down below which is terrifying okay she managed to break the grasp there we're gonna run over into this direction and let's just go crouched for now so that we're staying nice and low let's talk to elliot um we definitely can't talk of course we are going to take off the earplugs we're gonna go and put our equipment back on first of all before anything else Okay, everything should be equipped properly, but right now, my god, the warmth! Our legs are so warm! Um, it's a very, very hot night, it would seem. Jeez, I don't know if that's gonna change anytime soon, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. Okay, so, Elliot, let's actually wake you up here. He didn't wake up then at all, and we can, we can see that thing down below. We can't attack it, but it certainly can try and attack us. So, uh, we need to push this thing out the way. Okay, there we go, we're clear of that. Elliot, are you actually following us? Because there is smoke. There is smoke coming from downstairs. I don't know if he is. I think he's, I think he's eating. If I had to take a wild guess, I'd say he's probably eating. We're gonna swap positions with him and then try and push him that way a little bit just to see if we can kind of jumpstart him. <laughs> um, we may just have to wait until he's done with that. Okay, so I honestly think that we might be able to get out that way. Oh, uh, maybe not. The tree isn't as close as I thought it was, because that's just a path beneath here. We could also just wait and see if the smoke dissipates. I mean, it kind of looks like it is. It's a little difficult to tell. We can see it just, it's just all around here at the moment. Obviously, there was some noise earlier on, and that drew just all of the dead over in this direction. I think, I think we're going to peek. We're just going to have a look and see what's down here. Oh, we can't, because there's a headless horror in the way right now. 
Um, okay, so let's just push Elliot back here. That's not going to be the way that we want to go right now. We don't we don't have great options here. Um, just dropping off of a railing can be quite dangerous. Um, we can take a significant amount of damage by doing that. Um, this is a mesh screen wall, so we could destroy that and just try and climb down outside. So just drop down off the side here. Theoretically, we shouldn't take that much damage. We could also try to jump to the tree here and then... Yeah, it's just the jumping I'm not 100% about, really. Especially because that's a diagonal, I don't think that'll work out for us. So instead, let's try and destroy this mesh wall. That doesn't actually take that much for us to be able to do that. So climb down by lowering yourself from the ledge. Yeah, is that something Elliot is going to want to try and do, though? That's the thing. We could try and clear the dead out down around here and then call Elliot down towards us. We could also just let him chill in this house if we're going to try and go to this mall because while Elliot is very useful, he can also panic and cause just a huge amount of stress for us. So I'm not sure what we want to do in that situation. We may be able to call to him from down below, so if he doesn't immediately follow us, we'll tell him to just guard this position. But then, also, the idea of having him just out here isn't great. No, okay, let's try and be responsible here. Alright, we are going to make sure that this lad stays alive. So, we're going to need you to stay in this room, guard this location, we will be back. Oh boy, <laughs> the flesh raptor immediately smashes through the window. Alright, Dusk kills that thing. Good, good, this is fine this is totally fine okay um all right climb down by lowering yourself from the ledge yes okay we manage it totally fine fantastic i don't know if elliot would have been able to do that honestly and you know what we can work with the smoke here because we do have the pba mask if we chuck that on and activate it it will stop us from biting but it does mean that we can move in amongst the smoke without too much trouble so we are seeing a zombie predator we were for a second. I'm gonna take down that shady zombie over here. Oh boy, there is a whole ass party here. Yeah, the shocker, there's a runner, there is whatever this is. Oh, it's a snapper. It's just a different kind of model for the snapper. How lovely. Okay, I'm not even sure where the smoke is coming from as well. I'm not seeing a smoker here. Um, okay, we're going to start to try and draw some of the dead down towards us. They're not going to be able to see us right away, especially because of the smoke. So we'll just, we'll do what we can here. This is an acidic zombie here. We'll throw that back if we can. There we go. Using the couch to slow them down so we should have a few different uh, attempts to attack them. We've got acid here. Yeah. Let's try and see if we can bring some things down towards us. We could use a noisemaker to try and do the same thing, but we want to be cautious here. Uh, that striker, I'm a little bit nervous about. I don't know how strong it's going to be, but we managed to handle ourselves just fine. That one died on the acid. That's great. That's good. Working as I would want it to. The shrieker is a little bit of a problem, but I think if we just quickly pull that on over towards us, strike it. We got that dead. Let's try and boom the boomer. Um, slam that over there. That's a fair bit of noise, so it will draw dead to that area there. They may also try and make their way down here as well. So let's just head back over towards the couch. We don't have great sight, but... Oh, there's the smoker. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to back up entirely because we've got no sight whatsoever. Let's get towards the window so that we have a way out. If things get really bad, we could go towards this one even. Yeah, okay, this is fine, this is fine. The smoke will start to dissipate uh, eventually. We could also go into the smoke a little bit, but that's a, a bit more dangerous. We can see the shocker because it's emitting light right now. Um, we'll probably do well by trying to throw that against the wall if we can. I don't know if we can bounce it from that angle. Yeah, we kind of hurtle it into the wall. We didn't really do enough damage to it though. I think we need a better angle than what we had. Oh, okay. It arcs towards us, let's just move to the side, get away from that light right now, and let's see, we've got chairs all around us, I don't want to be stepping on them if we can avoid it, let's just move to this position here, two zombie predators, less than ideal, so what we're going to use here is a wave of force to push them back away from us, so that would have done some damage to them if they actually hurtled into things. Doesn't look like that zombie predator did though. So if they hit other creatures, it doesn't seem to do that much damage. We'll just throw that away again. We're trying to buy some time here. That one is not that hurt. Okay, and we've got two zombie predators here yet again. We could wait for the other one to try and jump over towards us and then use a, you know, uh, a wave of force 
We could also try and get out of the window in time before they reach us. Difficult for us to do. Okay, tried to bite us there. Let's just move to the side, just so we can maybe try and take out that one. Okay, stamina isn't great right now. A wave of force would be costly, but I think we need it. And mm, did it pay off? I, I can't answer that question just yet. Okay. Now, I think we just need to try and hold our ground. Our stamina ain't great though, which is not super. If we can take down this zombie predator before we try and deal with the other, that would be good. We can afford a force shove, just. But I think we're just gonna try and hold our ground here. We're gonna wait a turn so that we can knock it back. That gives us another turn to try and knock it back. The predators, we have to remember, have really good armor penetration, but there we go, we got it. Okay, take out this headless zombie, the regular zombie, and we're just gonna try and hold this window for now, just trying to get our stamina back, while we're trying to breathe deeply, uh, which is difficult to do while we've got the mask on. Okay, something is destroying this window. Can't see anything though, so it could be a shade. We've killed most of the things in here right now, so yeah, Slathering Biter is still up there. I mean, we've got two, oh, Zombie Snapper and Slathering Biter, I see. Okay, so I wanna to move to this position here. We'll try and slam that one. Um, ideally, we get some more stamina before we try and do this fight though. I'm being a little irresponsible right now. So let's just back up. Let's just try and breathe, catch our breath. Uh, we spotted the Snapper. It looks like it is going to try and engage us. So let's just get ready for that. And as long as we're doing that little wait a turn beforehand, we should get our little Palm Strike ability which does make a difference. It knocks them down, gives us time to recover. Let's try and go for you a little bit here. Okay, you're stunned. Let's go for the stunned one before the other reaches in towards us. Okay. All right, bit down on us for a second then, but we're okay. Stamina is good enough that we should be able to continue a fight here. Slowly but surely, we're starting to clear this place out for our brother. Okay, that one should die pretty quickly. There we go, we got that. Let's back up onto the couch here. Use that to our advantage. The runner, we can take down pretty quickly. Both of them we can though, so I'm feeling all right about that. Grappler has got us grappled. That's now dead, and the Headless Horror is the last thing alive in here. So let's try and slam that against the wall. Do a bit of damage to begin with. Okay, it's hostile. Can't see us right now. Damn. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that thing's kind of dangerous. Let's be let's be more careful with that in the future. And now, well, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on the ground here. It's a lot of stuff for us to go through. I'm not that concerned with the wallets right now, but I am just going to kind of try and go through each of the bodies here, each of the piles, just to see if we can find some things of interest on them that we may wish to try and take with us. Okay, and I've kind of been through the lot of it here. Nothing that crazy. Oh no, the stairs are gone? Yeah, I think the stairs are gone. The stairs were here. Um, climb. Okay, we can get up that way. So can Elliot actually follow us down? Is that gonna be something that you can do? Uh, follow me, Elliot. I, I, I hope so, I really do. Let's see. Sheer drop, jump. Okay, so now we actually need to try and get him to follow us down in the same manner that we got down before. Whether or not he can, I still don't know. I'm gonna leave this door open for him just so he has some options though. Let's take this mask off for now. Uh, we're a bit hungry, so before we drop down, let's eat some canned tomato and some smoked meat. We did spot a zombie for a moment then. Are we seeing anything right now? It doesn't look like it. Okay, climb down, yes. Okay, we make it down and Elliot does the same. Good on you, brother, well done. Okay, he is with us the night surprise surprise is foggy as ever i have never seen so much fog in cataclysm and i think it's just a it's just the thing that the mega city has going on for it maybe they had like a terrible smog problem before the apocalypse and that's just stuck so unfortunately our vision on the outside right now is terrible so we need to really rely on our hearing as we try and make our way down towards the mall we need to hope that most things have moved on or have moved away somewhere else but we're ready, we are ready for a fight. And we've got a feral goblin. Okay, so <laughs> let's start the fight against that thing there. And I will try and smash that. We'll take that cash card from it. Okay, there we go. And it seems like, I was gonna say, it seems like it's alone. That's a lie. We've got a feral dwarf somewhere. Okay, right there. So the feral dwarves can be a bit of a problem. Ideally, we'll try and fight this together. Looks like we're gonna have to try and fight this shady zombie first though. Let's move to the side double team that thing with Elliot. Okay, it had a pipe in its hand. Those rocks can just be absolutely deadly if we have enough of them striking us at once. 
bastards. Okay, well those, <laughs> those are the doors to the mall, and we, we are finally inside. We're seeing, I think, smoke down here. Hazy cloud, that is worse than smoke. Poison is a bitch, and Elliot, what are you doing? Stick with me. Brother, I swear, I think it's the hazy cloud that freaks him out sometimes. Can you come down this way at all? Okay, well, we've got some dead in here. That much is for certain. Um, let's see, he is following us, kind of, now. Okay, can we go this way? I'm trying to get away from the main track of them all. Um, this glass, these doors here, it's laminated, so they are kind of reinforced. This, this is what we're looking for, though. Metal doors are fantastic. They can actually protect us from the dead. So, we got some memory cards in here, we will take those, and it sounds like there's some more activity ahead of us as well. That's just a basic wood door, which is unfortunate, but this metal door, okay, so we now have a safe place within the mall, which is important. It takes a lot to be able to get these doors down, however, if there is a feral, it will be able to open the door. So what we might try and do now is just get a little bit of strength going, so we'll enhance our strength, there we go, and we're going to drag this locker, and we're going to try and put that locker, um, kind of over here. Elliot, we're just gonna have to push you out the way. Mm, that's not really working, is it? Okay, grab that. Okay, you are being a real pain right now, buddy. Okay, let's see. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so it kind of blocks off the door a little bit. You kind of need one to be on either side here for it to really have a good effect, but it's a start. <sighs> what are you? Swollen tearjerker. A bloated corpse, its ballooning skin blistered and rashy, and its face caked in mucus. The off orange color gas occasionally leaking from it makes your eyes water and smells faintly of pepper. It's, it's tear gas. It's freaking tear gas. Okay, so if we can quickly get over towards this door. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Okay, well, we've been tear gassed. Um, I don't know how it blew up as quickly as it did. My intention was to get down towards this door and close it in time so that we could lock it in place. Now, we've got tear gas everywhere. It's not poison though, so that's at least kind of a good thing. I'm pretty sure we closed the other door in time. We're going to use some saline solution, see if that helps. It does not. It does nothing. It does nothing. We're coughing heavily right now. Um, let's swap positions with Elliot. Um, okay. Alright, it's gas all around there. All right, and yeah, our stamina's completely gone. Gosh, we've really set off the enemy. They are pissed. <laughs> oh my god. And I think they're all above us. Just their activity is wild. Okay, we really need stamina. This is a bad situation for us to be in. Let's stop concentrating for a moment. We actually started seeing a zombie. I don't know where. Above us? Shoot. So there is potentially a hole in the floor right now. A hole in the roof above us. A zombie fell down a ledge. Okay. It sounds like they might be falling outside currently. Yeah, we're seeing a zombie. We're seeing a feral dwarf. We can't attack them ourselves, but that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. Seeing a feral elf, a grappler. When we can see them like that, that does make me fear that the grappler will actually be able to grapple us. And like, yep, things like that. Okay, electricity arcing towards us. So they are shooting down between the levels here. So we need to be cautious of that. Okay, we're getting our stamina back though. That is the main thing. And we kind of need to just wait for this gas to dissipate. So let's wait, catch our breath. Okay, we managed to get that back. That's good. And so now I think we're going to try and give ourselves, uh, you know, a little advantage. We're going to go electrical discharge and we'll also go for the voltaic strikes as well. I'm also tempted to, to go for momentum alteration because that just makes us faster in general. Uh, it's a lot of things that we are focusing on though. And boy, it does take us a moment or two to actually get our breath back, but we've got it. From the east and above, we are hearing a high-pitched hum. Hmm, okay, so it could be electricity, it could be something else. Yeah, we got that door closed, that's good. We can also close that door as well. It looks like we're just going to be waiting a while here for the smoke to dissipate. And Legionnaires, I hate to do it to you, I know it's a bit of a cliffhanger, but we are going to be calling it here for the day. With the Wood Twins, held up in a little stronghold in a monumental mall. The amount of dead that are here is alarming. Remembering of course that this is no hope and that we do have a higher monster spawn rate, they have quite the upward battle ahead of them. But where there is risk, there is reward and this mall could be very rewarding. But we have to keep in mind that nothing is worth the cost of their lives. If things go bad, if we get pushed into a corner, 
We just need to get out, cut our losses, and make it back home safely. So, let's see where the story takes us next. As you know, rummaging through one of the filing drawers here, Dusk can see a magic eight ball. Perhaps we'll let that guide us through this unfamiliar space. And while we are all gazing into that mysterious device, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.